Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, December the 12th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Benningangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about what I consider to be a betting opportunity. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's been rough sledding. I just want to be as upfront as I could be. It's been rough sledding of late. I had the favorite. I had Golovkin over Canelo in the rematch. And uh, Canelo officially beat him. Right? Just recently, I had Jose Pedraza, plus 650 underdog, over Lomachenko, hedged with the over. Right? That video's still up. Now, the over delivered. Pedraza did snap Lomachenko's eight fight stoppage or quit streak. Right? He did. But when you hit on a hedge like that, you're really just getting your money back, right? You're not getting the big plus 650 odds. I had 16 to 1 long shot, Joe Hanks over Joe Joyce, right? And Hanks got blown out in the first round. I had plus 140 underdog, Tyson Fury over Deontay Wilder, hedged with Wilder by stoppage, right? Let's just say Fury gets off the canvas of the 12th round. That fight makes it to a decision. I did not win either half of the hedge. So, buyer beware, right? We're taking risks here. I'm not playing it safe, right? I'm, I'm not here trying to take short things. I'm actually here trying to make a profit, right? When something like the Wilder finish happens, right? The uh, Fury, Wilder situation, gamblers like me lose. Now, Saul Alvarez is a very popular fighter who has had his share of close decisions, right? What I want you to do is to Compare and contrast the CompuBox numbers with the scoring in his victory over Austin Trout. Right? What I want you to do is to revisit his first fight against Golovkin with the scorecard of that fight. Right? Revisit the second fight too. Let's just say Canelo has received the benefit of the doubt. Now, he just signed a multi-million dollar deal with DAZN. There's big money behind him. Perhaps more than $300 million behind him. He's with Michael Buffer right now on a series of commercials here in the United States publicizing DAZN. An argument can be made that Saul Alvarez is the premier ambassador right now among elite fighters for the sport of boxing. Right? You need to be aware of his commercial significance. If you're someone who believes that judges think about the financial future of the sport, Think about who's well-connected and who's not. You need to consider Saul Alvarez's box office appeal. Understand, Saul Alvarez is a guy who routinely draws more pay-per-view viewers than the recent heavyweight title fight between the WBC champion and the lineal champion. But let me say this. We're gamblers here, right? I'm not here trying to make friends. I'm actually here trying to make money. The line on this fight is simply preposterous. I get the champ in a division where Canelo has never 
fought. A division that's eight pounds heavier than Canelo's last fight, which, let's face it, and I'm being charitable here, was a photo finish. Now I get him against a puncher. That's who Rocky Fielding is. I know Fielding doesn't seem to have a high KO percentage. But understand, guys like Christopher Rabrasi went the distance with George Groves. Right? Fielding fights guys who are hard to stop. I'm just telling you, he's a guy capable of, in fact he has, stopped a reigning super middleweight champion, Tyrone Zyge, in Zyge's backyard. He's a hooker. Now, whatever you think about Rocky Fielding, just think about what you would be thinking if you were Rocky Fielding. Some guy at 160 pounds, some middleweight, is going to try to gain weight and fight me in his first fight at super middleweight? And he thinks I'm going to be concerned about what? His punch? Some guy who's shorter than me thinks I'm going to be concerned about what? His reach? He came forward against Golovkin in that rematch, right? Continually collapses the pocket. If you're the bigger man, aren't you thinking, oh, I hope he does that against me? Isn't that what bigger men think? Right? Don't, don't they say, hey, you know, Anthony Joshua, I would imagine Joshua wants you in front of him. He doesn't want to chase you. He wants you coming to him. Fielding is probably hoping. And this is a guy who's a hard puncher, hooker, who throws body shots as part of his arsenal. Right? In my favorites folder, right here now online on YouTube, are his highlights. You're going to notice him stop Zyge with a body shot. Zyge goes down. Zyge is not the only guy Fielding has stopped with body punches. Right? Let's face it, too. Neither Fielding nor Canelo is defensively blessed. Neither of them. Also, Canelo, not the most mobile at 160. By gaining eight pounds, does anyone watching this video think he's going to suddenly be more mobile at 168? I think Canelo is going to come in and Canelo is going to try to collapse the pocket. I think Canelo knows that Callum Smith stopped Rocky Fielding. That Christopher Rabrasi knocked him down. I think Canelo is thinking stoppage here. If he wants to impress the zone, if he wants to impress you, the boxing public, if he wants to impress the people at the Mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, isn't he going to try to do so by stoppage? Folks, he lands several shots on Golovkin. Several. I don't believe after the performance he gave in the Golovkin rematch, and by the way, sour grapes on my part, I still think Golovkin won both fights, but if Canelo's going to duplicate the performance that he gave in the Golovkin rematch, that means he's going to try to walk down Rocky Fielding. The bet I like here, because the odds always matter to me, is fielding at 7-1 to one to win the fight. I'm getting a plus 700 on a champion who's only lost to Callum Smith when the opponent has never fought at super middleweight? Right, understand too, fielding's the older guy here. Fielding's not some young 21-year-old who just got a title 
who's going to show up in New York City and be overwhelmed. He's not 21, folks. He's 31. I like Rocky Fielding to win the fight, plus 700, as of today, Wednesday, December 12, 2018. Let me tell you, I bet this fight so long ago, I got a plus 800. I like the plus 700, too. But I'm going to hedge the play here with the under. The under seven and a half rounds. Now, the hedge is dangerous. Let me be the first to say it. Right, the casino has priced this correctly. Seven and a half only gives you to the midway point of the eighth round. Right? It's dangerous. But I believe that both men are going to try to make a statement. I'm not convinced that Rocky Fielding believes that middleweight Saul Alvarez can hurt him. Right? I think this is going to be a big man thinking, hey, this little guy can't hurt me. And here he is in the pocket. I'm going to throw some punches. Fielding has stopped guys in the first round. He wins the title by stoppage. I also believe that Canelo is riding high right now. He's gotten a draw against Golovkin. He's beaten Golovkin in the rematch. All these people, all these folks hating online like me, talking about tainted meat and stuff like that, haven't given him his just due. He's run roughshod through the super welterweight division, the middleweight division. Now he wants to make a statement at super middle. Who's going to stop him? I don't believe this guy, who's smaller than Fielding, who's tall, is planning on outboxing Fielding. He doesn't want to leave it in the hands of the judges. I think he feels that if he collapses the pocket like he did in the rematch against Golovkin, he's going to get the stoppage. I'm sure he's researched Fielding. He's looked at that Callum Smith fight, which ended very early. And he's thinking, look, I can hit like Callum Smith. Fielding's going to give away his height, right? Fielding's not a guy who uses length. He's going to give away his height. He's going to have his chin there. I'm going to find it. I'm going to send everyone home early. So, one way or the other, I'm expecting a stoppage. The casino is giving you seven to one odds on the champion. Those are the odds I'm going to take. When I say the champ, I understand both guys have belts. This fight's not at middleweight. There's only one champ at super middle. I like the seven to one odds that I'm getting on the champion. I'm going to hedge the play with the under seven and a half rounds. Since I don't expect Canelo to do a lot of moving, I think we're going to know early in this fight, just like we did in the Canelo-James Kirkland fight, just like we did early in the Callum Smith-Rocky Fielding fight, I think we're going to find out early in this fight who's fooling who, right? I'm expecting a stoppage. I want the chance at big money. I think Rocky Fielding is mispriced. I like Rocky Fielding at 7-1 to one to win the fight. I'm hedging it with the under 7.5 rounds. But understand the risk involved. Right? Fielding has gone the distance in some fights. Canelo has gone the distance in some fights. Miguel Cotto, both Golovkin fights. Even the Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight. Right? Just to understand the risk involved. If the fight goes the distance and Rocky Fielding does not win the fight, you lose it all. Right? If the fight makes it past the midway point of the eighth round and Canelo wins the fight, you lose it all. 
But understand, if Rocky Fielding comes out, decides he's going to make his own statement, lands on Saul Alvarez and treats Saul Alvarez like a guy who's visiting his division. If Fielding gets the stoppage, you're winning both sides of the bet. As if the 7 to 1 odds aren't big enough, you would also win the other side of the bet. Right? Finally, let me close by saying this. This fight is not in Las Vegas. It's not. It's in Madison Square Garden. Now, what I want people to do is to revisit the Amir Khan Pauli Malinaji fight that took place in New York City. Right, folks? British fans will travel to New York City for a fight. Right? They just traveled to Los Angeles to root on Tyson Fury. They'll cross the Atlantic for this fight. Let me also say this, too. Guys who are blessed with the judges. Think young Oscar De La Hoya, for example. Sooner or later, the empire strikes back. Sooner or later, a guy like Oscar De La Hoya, after getting some decisions like the decision over Pernell Whitaker, still eyebrow raising when I think about it, right, will find themselves in situations where it could go either way. Now, if the guy has a reputation for being pampered, the judges might have a backlash. Judges might think to themselves, okay, I know. I know. There's word out on the street that judges have been too kind to this guy. So you get situations like the scoring in the Oscar De La Hoya Felix Trinidad fight. You get situations like the scoring in the Oscar De La Hoya Shane Mosley rematch, a fight I thought De La Hoya won by a few rounds. I believe Deontay Wilder, if he ever fights the same fight that he just fought against Tyson Fury, is not going to get the benefit of the doubt because the word's out on the street. The judges treated this guy well. I believe if Jeff Horn ever fights Manny Pacquiao again, the judges aren't going to treat him as kindly. Right? Because I think in boxing, there's karma. Now, right now, the word's out on the street. Many people believe, many, let me raise my hand, that the judges treated Saul Alvarez a bit too kindly in the scoring of that Golovkin rematch. Right? At some point, at some point, there's blowback. Right? At some point, you can be Ali and lose to Leon Spinks that first fight. At some point, the judges are going to say, wow, this is close. You know what? This guy has gotten the benefit of the doubt in the past. I'm going to go the other way here. You're going to have a lot of Brits in the crowd. You're going to have Canelo in against a bigger guy who's a puncher who can punch down. Right? Fielding isn't just a head hunter, folks. He's a body hunter. He's going to find Canelo. If this is a spirited fight, given that Fielding is the champ, and normally in boxing we say ties, you keep your title. Right? Deontay Wilder is still the WBC champion at heavyweight. Right? Given that Fielding's the champion, given that you're going to have a lot of Englishmen in Madison Square Garden, right? A lot of us will use any excuse to get to Manhattan, won't we? You're going to have a crowd that's not going to be as pro Canelo as you think. And even the folks who are pro Canelo, many of them privately feel, hey, we got a break against Golovkin. Right? Don't be surprised if this fight goes the distance, if Rocky Fielding gets the decision. Anyway, when you see seven to one odds, 
against the reigning champion in favor of a guy who has never fought in that division, folks, in my opinion, that bet makes itself. So, with due warning that I've taken some underdogs who have lost, right? Pedraza plus 650, you got the over, you got the hedge. Pedraza delivered on that, right? Joe Hanks plus 1600, no hedge, just a loss, right? Given that I've taken some underdogs and the bets haven't paid off, Tyson Fury plus 140, right? They called it a draw, right? Just understand, this is high risk. I'm taking the underdog here again. Rocky Fielding plus 700, I'm hedging it with the under seven and a half rounds, right? If Fielding wins a decision, if Fielding wins, period, you're good. If Canelo wins by knockout in the first seven and a half rounds, you're good. Understand you're not good if Canelo wins after the midway point of the eighth round. You lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.